are we together on this? Yes, I can see that just fine. So if I just roll these, I haven't looked at them for a, a couple of days, so I'm not exactly sure where the, the salient bits are. But yeah, just, uh, yeah, come in the edge there if I freeze that. If we come back a bit there. See the edge there? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's like a triangle. Yes. So, so this isn't encapsulated. Okay. Yeah, which means that it's that it's um, makes me think of, of fluid, fr essentially free fluid, but not in the tummy in the in, yes in the you're looking at. Uh, and so the the, op the the options are relatively small for free fluid. You do get free fluid abscesses, but I don't think that's normally the process. Uh, and it doesn't look like this. You can get solid masses that can mimic it, but again, it's it's that's a bit esoteric. Uh, so we're looking at blood, and a typical reason for blood to occur in someone in, in the age group you're in <coughs> at a non-standard area is blood thinners. Wow, so that, John. See what what. What I guess I told you in that email is that you found the edge of this uh, dark zone and, yeah. and it meant something to you. And what it meant to you is that this is not encapsulated. This is not like a cyst. This yeah. is a free flowing, like a seroma, but it just looks to me like it's it, it has a gelatinous like structure to it. And, and when yes. I'm pushing on it, it did not move much. Exactly that. And that's very typical for uh, blood, blood products. Well, after they've been there a little while. What would it be? Would it be a amber shade? Would it be, um, what, could, you, could you suck it out like it was jello through a huge needle? Or do you just watch this sucker? I think you'd, you'd, you'd probably watch it. Because it's, it's just a big, big hematoma that's got all glum, gungy and sticky, I think. You see all, this, all these echoes in there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. This, you, it isn't the only thing that can look like that, but it's, it's a very good uh, thing for it. You've got all this, this crap here, and it's, and, and it's just the fibrin coming out. Yes. Yeah? So... Let me let, let, let me tell you what I think I saw in the in the the echoes up up north or above that proximal. I think I saw the long head of the biceps uh, atrophied and the short head um, still intact. It was different than what I would you know I, I normally have seen before. And could could this have been a long head tear? And it was the accumulation of the blood product from the tear. Um, let me, I, I'm not sure how to get back to your, uh, to your missive. Let's see if I can find, when, to which day did you send? Uh, which way did, did you, let me see if I can find it. Again, it's not letting me go straight back to uh, yeah, uh, that one where oh now that here it'll be. So if I go there, it should open it up back, and we can get back to your files. Yeah, there we go. So I I did think that's what we were looking at. Uh, this is in the shoulder, and. That didn't make any sense to me. <laughs> it didn't make, it didn't make much sense to me. So, yeah, I'm, we're on the same page. Okay. <laughs> one, of, one of the other ones did make some sense. So yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll see if we can find that. How's the family, John? How's, how's work and everything? Everything getting better over there as far as uh, COVID and stuff? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, people are... Uh, uh, losing interest in COVID rapidly. <laughs> I, mean, I think we're a few weeks behind you guys, but uh, it's. Uh... 
So while this is doing this, John, talk to me a little bit about uh, how far away from a mass like that would you allow there to be the lesion? Or would you say in your mind, this is a distal biceps tendon issue? Could it have been? You don't know. I don't. I don't uh, I, with these, uh, if, if they're on something like tropical growth, I wouldn't necessarily expect that to be, I, that could be any minor thing. You could, you could bruise a, a little vein in that area. Oh. The, uh, your, um, your picture, when we get to it, your picture of what looks like an atrophied uh, uh, biceps is not new. Yes, yes, that's, that's fibrotic. And by, yeah. by, by new, we would, would your mind say two years or would your mind say at least six months? I, I don't know. I, okay. But not, not recent. It's, it's uh, probably old, you know, probably years, but doesn't have to be, I don't suppose. Uh, but it's, uh, but yes, this is not working. So we'll just, we'll go back and try again. Because sometimes it's just, yeah, there we go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I, it's, it's just, you've got to think that it's, uh, this, this is your biceps. Uh, it's coming up there. Let's have a look. And tuck under, you can see it there. With a little bit of fluid around it, hard to follow coming up, probably ending somewhere near the uh, thing. You're not keeping tight enough on it yep. as you come up, yep. but uh, but yeah, they're, they're not always straightforward to follow. Uh, work and then I think this was a better one. Yeah, you came up better here. Uh, are we going down there? Yes, and this is just natrophied uh, biceps, you know, just as, as as you said. And then, but this is quite a long way down there. Yeah. So yeah, this is this is this is not particularly. Can I, I? I would not associate one with the other. I would just associate it with, you know, you've just bashed it. They bashed. They knocked their. They, it might well be they just knocked their arm. Yeah. And. Okay. Uh, and, and it's swollen up or knocked their elbow. Uh, you'd, you'd look around to see if there was anything, uh, any cause, but if they had reasonable movement and they hadn't, didn't remember doing anything, I would be thinking, this is just a big hematoma. Wow, well, that's very, very, very valuable. And what's most valuable to me is that you identified the acuity of, of, of the vault that there was an, a spot that did not have contiguity of a capsule or a wrapping. And that's what keyed you into saying, this is blood. Is that yeah. right? I think, I think we probably would have thought it was blood anyway, but uh, is he gonna let me back? No, let's go back to here, I'll pop back to this one. Uh, but yes, it's, there are lots of things in the story and in, and, and in what else it could be uh, that, that fit with that. Uh, but you check to see whether there's any blood flow in it. You can't see any. You need to make sure you don't put any pressure on it. But uh, uh, I need help with that, it, John. I need to remember that because I like to smash and I like to smash hard. And I yeah. think you, you, you had a saying something about, I forgot what you, you had said to your students as to how light they should hold yeah. this. Yeah. You have to, you have to be able to just have a, a layer of jelly visible over the top of it. Yeah. See, I just, I, 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 superficial. but when you, when you're looking at color, you have to move, you, you have to stop the probe essentially. The probe has to be still yeah. and there okay. has to be no force. Okay. I, 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 I don't do that, John. I need yeah. to do that. What you're saying and is I don't always, but but when I'm but when I'm asking the question, because if there was blood flow in that thing, it's a whole different kettle of fish. So you really have to answer that question, uh, and and so uh, if you want to be sure you're not missing a cancer, yes, then then you have to be confident that you've you've examined uh, it, and therefore you need a light touch. Anything dark, the bright lipomas. People can be a bit lazy about, but uh, but dark lesions you definitely you you're gonna sleep very badly uh, if you do that if you don't uh, 
hold the pressure off because you will get bitten, not by a lesion that looks like this necessarily, but by smaller things uh, where you will where you will get uh, uh, where you'll be you'll be just plain wrong, and and it will have blood flow in it. So I do completely understand you saying, Fritz, stop moving the probe and lightening up your pressure. But as I'm dissecting this mass yeah. and doing that, I must need to then do it in a grid type fashion where I simply hold it and watch and hold it and watch. And, and the mm -hmm. larger I drag that box, yeah. it just seems to me like my sensitivity gets absolutely shot especially yeah. on, on the little thing I have. So what you have to do is with something like this in practice is to decide that it's, a, uh, that it's mostly fluid and look at it and then pick out the bits that look most solid and make sure that those you, you scan in detail and move the probe very slowly. It doesn't have to be stationary, but you have to, you have to be, be the cool, smooth, look through and it doesn't take very long in actual fact you, yeah. you can't quite quarter one of these things you'd have to have the box on big and yeah. only picking up larger vessels but in the area of interest increase the sensitivity shrink the box down if necessary to to get it to the machine to work faster and uh, and with more sensitivity and then uh, and then really look at those areas and you're looking at uh go through You'd be thinking, just making sure some of this so more solid looking bits. Okay, that's what I was wanting to know. The area of interest would then not necessarily be the edges. The area of interest would be where it is dense. Um, yeah. Because yeah. it looks like there's some almost cellulitis type response in, in some of that hang down fat uh, that, yeah. that, that's around it. But you would expect that with one of these, you'd expect there to be minimal flow in one of those, maybe a vessel transecting it, but certainly no, no growth, no uh, uh, irregular flow. Uh, would you pursue that, that, that zone that is actually a valve bringing fluid in? Because where, where you stopped it, you, okay, all right. No, By the way, there's no, there's no if it, if you had a, a valve flowing in, if it, there, were, there, there isn't actually a place, there's no, there, there will be no flow in, in this. The blood isn't flowing into it. It has just collected over a period of time. And, and, and you are almost certainly seeing it in a, in a stable state where it has be, just become a big blob of gooey, sucky mass in there. Uh, if you actually saw flow in it, anything swirling around, that is a completely different creature. And if you see something like that, then you've got some sort of pseudo aneurysm or some sort of aneurysm. And that's a bigger deal and needs immediate attention. Okay. That's when you, and, and one day you'll see that in a groin, someone will come back having had a, an angiogram or something or just bash themselves somewhere. And it'll be a, a one in, one in 10,000, one in 20,000 stand. But, it, but uh, once you start seeing arterial flow, when, once you start seeing fast flow, then that has to be understood at a medical level. What's going on there? You know, once you, once you have anything in the periphery with arterial flow in it, or with any, any flow really that's not in a vessel, then, you, then you've got the potential for a serious problem, which is, you know, above our pay grade. It's like <laughs> yes, <laughs> for sure. John, this is incredibly helpful. Some of my takeaway pearls from this is that your eyes, when you went over this, locked in on it not being uh, uh, completely formed as a, 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 a as as a round shape, but that yeah. you found that edge, and that made you say, "This." It, it, it was with confidence that you said, "This is a blood." product or at least this is the that has flowed into there yes and so you and, and and so it's it doesn't it's it's not something that's built up over time and we, in, in in an enclosed space and just stretched oh. it has okay. flowed in yes that's how it ends up creeping through here now it can be edema it can be all sorts of things but that shape uh. is 
So, so the reality is it was reassuring to see that there was not a line to you. Uh, it, 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 it was the way that you could say, likely not sinister, Greg, because there's a line of where this was fed, and it's not that this grew from within its own um, area and, and made it. That's helpful, John. That's, that's helpful. Honest, we, would, we would have looked at this and said, you know, it's, it's probably a hematoma anyway. Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the, the other bits of the picture. Uh, that you've got that where it's where it's all nice and round you know you've got uh, in other places you've got structure you've got other bits of structure here uh, what, do you, what do you call this john what do you call this not a mass what do you is, call this on your report it, i would say there is a large collection a I large mean, collection a not completely encapsulated collection okay. in the subcutaneous layer but you wouldn't say a large collection of blood or blood products. That you would just say comes in, that comes in the next line. It's a, a large, a large, complex fluid collection with variable echoes and some apparently solid elements. Low echo solid elements. Uh, it's not entirely encapsulated, and uh, and it has no blood flow in it. And this has then comments. This has. Appearances are strongly suggestive of a large hematoma, large, partly, uh, uh, what's the word, coagulated or uh, partly solidified hematoma. This is so helpful, John. I, I tell you, uh, this, is, this, this is learning for me, man. Um, anyway, I, I, I don't know that I have anything else. If you have something you want to share, I'm all ears. I, and, but, but again, this is off our schedule. Okay. So assist and, and uh, assist, um, um, uh, a capsular fluid in it? Talk to me. Yeah, there's some fluid. There's a little cyst. There's some just general crap. <laughs> just, so, just, just, soft tissue, just a uh, so proliferation of some soft tissue, some old synovium maybe that's gone rusty. Uh, and the biceps is sitting there. The biceps is quite bulky as it goes around that corner and it's losing it. And you don't really see a lot of normally as it comes out there, you should see some subscapularis, which I'm not really seeing. Uh, what have we got? Uh, we come here. This is the same biceps. This is, there's, you can see the supraspinatus. That's where the supernatus should yes, be sitting. Yes, yep. yes, the leading yes. supernatus is not there. Uh, cartilage there. Sorry, just various. I'm just chopping clips. Uh, I'm not quite sure what I was trying to show. Now, oh, this is the supernatus here in long section. That's just a bit weird because there's a stump, a little bit of a, the remains of a stump there, but it's not actually going round. So the lead, a bit of the leading edge is still stuck on that great tuberosity. But not much, and it does, and, and and it doesn't stay there. You know, there's the supraspinatus is gone, so it's all gone. But it hasn't most mostly. They pull off the greatest tuberosity, don't they? Uh, but this one's actually the greatest tuberosity's got its shape still. Yes, the massive tears don't normally keep their shape, but that's because there's still some stump attached, and it's torn just dis, just proximal. You're predominantly long axis on the supraspinatus tendon here, but a little bit oblique. This is probably, I was trying to be long axis. Yeah. This, is, this is probably long axis, but that's a stump and then it's gone. Yeah. And, 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 and that stump was the insertional part. Yeah. That, this that... is the insertion of the front of supraspinatus. So as we go a little bit further back, there, it disappears completely. Yes, yes. Yeah. So there's a bit of stump left, but the whole tendon's gone. Yeah? Yes, yes. And uh, and I think it gets more interesting. This is a uh, long head of biceps we've already had a look at. Subscapularis was much harder to make any sense of. There's subscapularis. Yeah. Yes. You, yes. And, and it's gone. And it's just a bit too, it's gone off the top. The, the, the top part of supraspinatus is not there. Scapularis or supraspinatus? 
Through the subscapularis. Yeah, okay. It's coming there. Just yeah. that little the biceps is coming out of the out of thing there, but we would still expect there to be a little bit of subscapularis there. And you can get that there when you're looking. There's the edge of the labrum. Wow. I don't I need to have more of that kind of stuff because I don't have the ability to orient uh, labrum anteriorly, and that's what you're showing me there. You don't normally see it. This guy's got no fat and lots of muscle. Okay. So, so you can see it better. So this is coracobrachialis here. There's the short head of biceps there. And uh, so we're coming up to the coracoid and there's, uh, and there's bone. Wow. Fluid. And so he's, he's lost his uh, subscapularis, but it was very messy. I had real trouble making sense of it, which is why oh. I would say the case is there. That also explains the medial translation of the long head through the through the through the groove a little bit, yes. Yeah. So, though, though you see that often, and it's not there. When I first started scanning him, <coughs> his shoulder was a bit stiff, and I did wonder if this was going to be some sort of frozen shoulder. Yeah, yeah, right yeah, 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 yeah. And that's the coracohumeral ligament there. Uh, and did I see the coracochromial ligament at the same time? Yeah, probably that's or, or certainly the plane off. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, there's it loosen, there's it tighten. So talk to me how have, far how far from the tip are you, John? Are you halfway from the tip of the coracoid in route to the clavicle, or where are you? Yeah, the, the, just you know, you, you you've got it as a finger, and you just come up it, and you know it's variable where where you find it, uh, and. Uh, and, and sometimes if you find it, and you do need to get the shoulder back a little bit on some patients, as well as externally rotating them. Uh, so yeah, uh, that, so, he, so he actually had quite, not a very thick, but quite a tight coracohumeral ligament. Uh, now, not a very thick. Are you saying that normally it would appear a little bit larger than that? Or were you saying he has a normal sized one? It's not, it's not thickened. They are, they are very variable in size. Okay. And that doesn't look thickened, but it okay. does look tight. It does look short. It does look very well defined. Though everything on this gentleman anatomically was, was well defined. This is, again, this is, this is actually the short axis. This was a weird one. I could not get a decent picture of this, but this is his... Uh, subscapularis and short axis. I could not get his arm round very far to see it, but this is all that's left of the tendon, as far as I can make out, just this bundle. Does I that, believe... Is that periosteal echo at all indicative of a cleft or a lifting of, of the structure at all? I wasn't sure. It, this was a very messy shoulder. Okay. Uh, and, and I was in full guessing mode. That's where I live, John. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's my, that's my playground. <laughs> There's his infraspinatus. Oh, wow. Wow. That's beautifully bad. Yeah, <laughs> beautifully bad. I like it. <laughs> I had, again, he was not an easy scan, but this is his infraspinatus tendon, yeah. intramuscular part, portion of the tendon. Where you can Some see that it's retracted and almost made a its own little environment there. Yeah. A little, little uh, defect inside it as well. So, and so some of it is, is still attached, as you can see, because it gets dragged around. Talk to me briefly about the labrum, John. What do you do in your mind with the labrum? What does it have to be for you to make any comment on it as a lesion uh, problem area? I, to be honest, I cannot remember the last time I mentioned it. <laughs> that, <laughs> you know, when it's, when it's all a horrible mess, it's, it's, yes. it's not a bigger mess. Okay. <laughs> but if, 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 if you had this, this hankering to clear a labral tear, like a slap that goes all the way around back to there, um, it's just not something you're confident yeah. enough in, like a meniscus? Just haven't seen it. Okay. Don't, don't see them when when they're that big and that messy. Then they grow. They're either grossly unstable and they're gone for MR, or they're uh, 
uh, or there's so much OA around that it's pretty relevant. Okay. Yeah. So far, you know, I will uh, I will let you know if ever that opinion changes, but I sort of uh, did not. Uh, and then just as, as an aside, this was his uh, short head of... Uh, yes. Biceps. Just a little bit of calcinosis there, as if he didn't have enough wrong with his shoulder. <laughs> calcinosis, as opposed to calcific um, um, tendonitis, or is it calcinosis if we're dealing I, with... I, no, I, I, I just... Uh, I tend to try to, I'll just use calcinosis maybe if I'm not ascribing any pathology to it. Yep, yep, yep. You know, I don't, I'm not suggesting that this is, this is something that anyone should take any notice of. I'm just saying there's a little bit of calcium in there. Uh, you know, and but in the greater scheme of things, he, that's not his problem. Metabolically, that is just evidence that he has lived a, a, an active life or metabolically that's just what it is it's just it just what it is uh, we all get it's you know if, yep. if you scan long enough you you see it everywhere uh and uh, and particularly in people like uh, this gentleman uh who had uh, used his body well 